Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Brock with Dwayne Busty with Bolt Marketing. And we're seeing mixed trade in both grain and livestock futures this morning. And uh, let's talk about the grains first of all, Dwayne. We have soybeans and corn trending lower after a lower day yesterday. And we've got a lot of moving parts here that are kind of influencing the market this morning and yesterday, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we sure do. And I mean, we should probably talk about the tragedy and the, the Baltimore Bridge collapse yeah. there, you know. I think that was just a negative thing for just everything in general, just the uncertainty, you know, it, it you know, first comments were, is this some sort of act of terrorism? And then when you find out that's probably not the case, then, wow, everyone's an expert on bridge collapses <laughs> and social media is just blowing up that way. And it's not like we just more uncertainty than anything else than facts and uncertainty, I think just always leads towards people just wanting to be out of long positions in the futures market. And I think that's kind of what we had. You also got, end of the month, a big report I'm sure we'll talk about. I think that just all led towards a lower corn and soybean market yesterday. Yeah. And let's talk about reality here with the bridge uh, collapse and the port closure in Baltimore, because yeah. we don't have a lot of green that goes out of there. It's really ethanol, isn't it? Is that why corn reacted? I, I think so. Yeah. That's what I was reading overnight is, you know, obviously, you know, that's not a major port for corn going out or exporting. But what it is, I, I'm hearing is that ethanol comes in through that report quite a bit and, and out too for the export side. So interesting there. Um, it's probably more of an ethanol negative play that it may hurt ethanol demand a little bit because we also don't know when this gets opened again. You know, everyone's seen the videos. That wasn't like a small little chunk of bridge that collapsed. It was like a mile and a half or a mile. I, I don't know what it is. I, there again, uncertainty. I don't know the facts, but it, it looks like it'll take some time to fix. So that uncertainty probably drives the corn market down some more. And then we also went through some technical things too. Then once you know, the market does this, Michelle, it will sell it off in uncertainty. And then the chart guys look at something like what I would, the 20 day moving average, we went through that in May corn. So then they add to the selling. So it, it just kind of piles on top of itself. And then on soybeans, um, maybe another negative piece is that uh, China is going to liquidate more of their sow herd, right? Yeah, they announced that overnight. You know, we they've been doing this right the past right. year. And I think year over year we're down like seven percent, which we if you know how much how many hogs they have over there, seven percent is huge. Um, and that is just always negative for our soybean market because it assumes less feed demand out of China. So I think that was the big thing that kind of turned our soybean market yesterday and pulling it down today too. You bet. And as you said, and a month end of the quarter, so you get some position scoring there, especially with the funds really short. You would think right. maybe they would be covering some of those positions at some point, but we're headed into the reports on Thursday. And you always tell me that we focus on grain stocks, but you know the shiny thing was always the acreage figure. What kind of surprises do you think we could get from what you're hearing from farmers? Well, my thoughts are that the corn acres are going to be a little higher than the trade estimates and soybean acres may be a little bit lower. And that's just my guess on it. Um, I also noticed when you look at the trade estimates, the total acres were down about a million. And, and I understand lower prices, you know, would eventually push farmers to plant other things um, or even push to CRP or specialty crops. But in the planning intentions report, I don't think that's what happens. I'm afraid USDA is going to say that we didn't lose as many corn acres as we need to lose. And you and I talked about that almost last month too. You know, a couple of weeks ago when this trade, when this, I'm sorry, when this survey was out, the weather was great. Now, yesterday I was pushing snow and thinking it might be tougher to get all the corn acres in. But when the report was gathered, to me, it looked like a lot of guys would be thinking a lot of corn and maybe a less so, a little less soybean. So I'm a little bearish there, the corn market. Gotcha. Cattle market, the other one that saw a lot of uncertainty uh, the last yeah. couple of days, cattle on feed, and then you pile on the uh, HPAI news in dairy cattle. So that uncertainty, is that why we saw the big slide in cattle? Absolutely, Michelle. I'm glad you really mentioned the uncertainty term because that's what it is. You know, we got to remember these funds started buying this market back, right? And they're long like 60,000 contracts, estimated anyway. And if you're long that market and you're a fund manager and you have profits built in and you start getting a cattle on feed report that was kind of confusing, right? Because year over year it was bearish, but in general, it wasn't horrible. Um, but I get it. Placements were record high. I, I get that. And then, of course, the bird flu thing, man. Uh, talk about unbelievable uncertainty. And that uncertainty is going to keep for a while. So 
to my point, if you're a fund manager and you're long the board and you have some profits, I think it would just be so easy to say, just get me out. I know it's dropped two bucks, but I don't care. Get me out anyway. I want to save my profits. And that accelerated the selling, right? And we're probably going to see some more of that today. Eventually, we see a nice bounce, but it's going to take some time to gather all the facts on this bird flu thing. Yeah, certainly some overreaction, especially since it cannot be transmitted from cow to cow. It's safe in terms of the food supply is safe, regardless, both milk and meat. So we just got to get a little bit of uh, cooler heads to prevail. But it's end of the month, end of the quarter. So the funds have been long in that cattle market. So obviously they're cashing out, aren't they? Yeah, I think that's part of it too, end of the month, end of the quarter. And I, I don't want to make it sound like this is just a short-term temporary thing in cattle. I, I was getting a little bearish this market heading into this. Not, not bearish as much as just didn't like the way the trade was acting. It felt like the funds were st stopping buying anymore. And it, as bullish as the cash market is and, and the feeder cattle cash market, we need the funds to buy it if we wanted to push back up to levels that these contracts saw last year. So I, I was getting bearish before and now you mix this on top, I guess I, I'm okay to say that the highs are in. And for now, I, I'm gonna actually sell the pops for a little while. I don't know how low this market goes. and. I, I don't have to <laughs> calculate that and figure that out. I just know I want to sell the pops moving forward. Yeah, no doubt. And they're seeing a little bit lower futures are seeing a little lower price action again this morning. Tried to pop a little on the opening. Yeah. We also have, I, I got to believe, some cattle hogs spread on whining. Hogs are up this morning. And I don't know, does the China news actually support that market? Or are we trying to position ahead of the hogs and pigs report? Uh, all of the above. I, I think you're right. The, the China news that their herd is smaller helps our hog market here. Um, you know, it's kind of a backwards bullish thing because, I mean, they'll have less meat. But why are, why do they want less meat? Because they're trying to make it profitable there. So, But it does help our industry. But yeah, the cattle spread and whining for sure. Yesterday, I was very surprised how long hogs stayed positive with cattle down that hard. So there had to be some spread and whining going on there. You know, the hog market looks strong. Cutouts higher. Cash keeps trending higher. So it's a good market. But cash was higher on cattle too. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you never know. And of course, we're going into, like we said, end a month and a quarter. But the report, you know, generally this isn't a market mover. But, you know, if you look at some of the expectations here, we could see just a little bit of bearishness again, don't you think? I'm afraid so. You know, on both reports, you know, we've got a hog and pig report. That looks fairly neutral to me, um, you know. But back to the whole quarterly stocks and acreage report, it's, there's no doubt our quarterly stocks are higher year over year. The question is how high? Um, and that's really hard for me to predict and guess because a lot of times what USDA does there is they're backing up and adjusting production numbers more than they are. I mean, we generally know what demand is, but it's a big report. Now, as far as the acres, a part of me wants to tell people don't worry about it because we're going to adjust anyway. The prices will adjust and will change by June 30th. But the problem is this acreage number is the number that we trade until June 30th. So it's a big deal and it'll be a big deal tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Dwayne Bussey with Bolt Marketing. That is Markets Now.